these rigs wrote history. This is the Forest Museum at Duncan on Vancouver Island. And these are the tools of yesterday's loggers. Their work was rough and dangerous at times. But it laid the foundation for BC's basic industry and for the province's economy for years to come. Next on the scene were the foresters who measured the forest and looked for ways to manage them. Forestry's come a long way since its modest beginnings. Forest companies use high technology to plan and carry out the harvest. Foresters use high technology to renew the value and beauty of BC's prime resource. The story of these people, loggers, foresters, mill workers, is the story of British Columbia. The native peoples of the coast were the first, of course, to put its magnificent timber to work. They carved totems and canoes and built houses with workable red cedar. Captain James Cook became the first European logger of West Coast trees in 1778 when he sailed from Nootka Sound with coastal trees as spars. More Europeans came to harvest timber. Hand-cut lumber was sold by fur traders at Fort St. John in 1806. Pitt Sawyers cut B.C. logs into lumber, and Hewers cut logs into timber using flat-bladed axes. In 1843, the Hudson's Bay Company built the first mechanized mill, driven by a water wheel, near Esquimalt Harbor in Vancouver Island. From this and other mills, schooners took lumber to Valparaiso, Shanghai, and Australia. In the woods, loggers fell to big trees with axes and cross-cut saws. They moved them with ropes, blocks, and teams. They skidded them on grease logs, or sent them roaring down flumes to the water. One of the big problems has always been the size of the logs. Most of the timber in the Carlton district was fairly large, and the falling of the big trees it took very skilled men, and very fine type of men, to cut them down with hand saws make the big undercuts and then cut them down. And this is a problem that didn't arise in many other parts of the world. In fact, the fall of logging...